We go now to a man who speaks the language of the terrorists because he was one himself, Waleed Shubat, former member of the PLO. Waleed, welcome to the Savage Nation. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. Waleed, have you heard my little pocket history going back to 637 AD? You know it's all factually true. Uh, no, I haven't heard it, but I can, you know, uh, I'll probably figure out, you know, since the 6th century all the way to the Ottoman Empire, whether it's Fatimid, whether it's uh, Rashidin or Abbasid, has Islam has always been from the inception of Muhammad himself was a terrorist. This is the problem of the Western media, is that we do not include the history of Islam and its uh, process of expansion into Christendom, <clears throat> its occupation of Christian lands, decapitations. What we see ISIS is doing, what we see what's going on in France, has been going on from time immemorial, from the inception of Islam. But nobody wants to say that the emperor is naked. But why do they keep saying it has nothing to do with Islam? Listen to this astonishing insanity from Howard Dean, this lunatic who once played a big position in the Democrat Party, this leftist maniac in clip 12. This is a chronic problem. Uh, I, I stopped calling these people Muslim terrorists. They're about as Muslim as I am. I mean, they have no, they have no respect for anybody else's life. That's not what the Koran says. And, mm -hmm. you know, Europe has an enormous radical problem and an enormous, I, call, I think ISIS is a cult, not an Islamic cult. I think it's a cult. So, Waleed, is it a, I mean, is this a, the most absurd thing you've ever heard? Of course, it's very absurd. Uh, Islam what is, is what Islam states. In the Quran, even, it uses depictions from Jewish sources in which it, it says that whoever kills a man is as he killed the entire earth. But people never continue the verses. But as of those who do mischief, i.e., in this case, anyone who criticizes Islam does mischief, then cut their hands and feet from opposite sides, kill them, and banish them from the land. No one quotes these verses from the Quran right under the verses that says that there is, uh, you know, there's no, no compulsion in religion, or there is uh, to each his own faith, and all these things. Uh, and as, if a man kills a, a, another man, as he killed the whole earth, it's very clear that you find the alkaline, but then you find the acid reality next verse or next three verses. And this is the problem. The liberal talks about the alkaline. But the reality, the acid reality, is that you can find tremendous amount of hadith in Muhammad, even ISIS, when they issued their manifesto, talked about perfection of killing. This is just, you know, in the last year, in which they basically said that you have to perfect your killing. The plan is to kill 10 million Americans. And I was the first one to translate the ISIS manifesto. Of course, we have wait, to... Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. This, this mentality has been at war with the West since El Cid beat the Moors back into Africa in the 11th century. That, that every educated high school student knows. Did you just say that ISIS has a manifesto calling for the death of 10 million Americans? Absolutely. In fact, I was the first to translate some of that manifesto. It's a quite great detailed work. When the ISIS spokesperson posted a call to arms for Muslims around the world to kill American, Canadian, European citizens, especially French. And it stated that there has to be what is called jihad rada, which is repulse jihad. Americans don't even know about the style of jihad, in which they call also jihad at tabit, the perfecting of the killing methods. You know, an American slumber in naivete, not looking at these things. And it, I quoted verbatim, if you can kill a disbelieving American or European, especially the spiteful and filthy French or an Australian or a Canadian or any other disbeliever, including the citizens of the countries that entered into a coalition against the Islamic State, then rely upon Allah and kill him in any manner or way, however it may be. And he adds, you will not be safe, even in your own bedrooms, while you sleep. You crusader campaign will fail. You will pay the price, and we will hit you on your home front in a way that will cripple you to never extend your long arm ever again. And not only that, you have... Waleed, Waleed hold on. Uh, you're reading from the manifesto in an English translation, I take it. Yes, I mean, I'm reading from... ISIS's threat, introducing the manifesto, a 26-page fatwa, 
And can, you, was, can, you, can you please, for the sake of clarity, for a few seconds, 10 perhaps, read some of that in Arabic for those who are listening around the world. إن الأصل في القتل الإحسان فقد ثبت في الصحيح عن شداد بن أوس رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله كتب الإحسان على كل شيء فإذا قتلتم فأحسنوا القتل. So I guess I guess it does come from the Arabic and there is actually a connection to Islam. I suppose Howard Dean is wrong. Correct. And let me translate it. It was shown in Sahih, which is Bukhari, the top authority of Islam. The Prophet said, Allah wrote everything we need to know about kindness. So if you kill, perfect your killing. And if you slaughter, perfect your slaughter. And if you sharpen your blade and comfort your sacrifice, sharpen your blade and comfort your sacrifice. You know, it's not just a small gun, the knives and the AK-47s. It is the big gun that is involved in trying to stop the freedom of speech in the West. It is the Istanbul conference. It is Hillary Clinton being in, in, involved. In fact, just today, Erdogan, just before the attack, Erdogan of Turkey talked about stopping Islamophobia and pressuring the West and condemn the West. Those things don't come haphazardly, even when the first time we had attacks against the embassy in, in Cairo. You had uh, Mohammed Morsi calling for the same thing, and you had the televisions in Egypt and NAS TV, Muslim Brotherhood. There's big guns behind all of this, talking about just before the attacks. And, and well, Morsi was overthrown by the people, and of course John McCain went over there and told the people to reinstate Morsi. He wanted the Muslim Brotherhood back in Egypt, that moron. Now he's in power again. How are we ever going to defend ourselves, uh, is the question. How? Lock and load, you know. I believe in uh, <laughs> arming yourself. Lock and load and be ready. This is going to happen. In fact, I've been in every week, Michael, writing about the manifesto, telling Americans, and there's attacks that happened in the U.S., telling them this is going to increase in France, in Canada, in the United States, way before these events happened. Because I monitor the Arabic. I watch what they're doing. You have Al-Qaeda of Maghrib. They're involved in France. Most likely Al-Qaeda could be part of this. There's lawsuits that stems from the OIC with the Union of Muslims and things of that sort that sues uh, anyone, cartoonists, writers. And in fact, Michael, it's the liberals who are suffering more, because if you look at the latest killings of ISIS of journalists, you know, Foley and others, they were liberals. There are liberals who don't understand Islam and pussyfoot with Islam and play with the cobra as if, it's, if it is a fish, mm. and they go there with ISIS and they get killed. And so it's the liberal that doesn't understand. Me and you, we know we understand the language of lock and load and the First Amendment and the right to bear arms and all these things. In New York City, the New York Police Department, under Mayor Bloomberg, to his credit in this case, had a very vigorous uh, division that monitored the mosques looking for radicalism. It was immediately eliminated when the psycho uh, socialist mayor took over, de Blasio. Uh, if you know the secret history of these terrorists, which you obviously do, where would they be hiding in America right now before the Cobra strikes again? Would it not be a mosque? It certainly wouldn't be a, a church, a synagogue, or a Buddhist temple. Where would they go? Well, the mosque is the headquarters. Americans don't understand <clears throat> that a mosque is considered waqf in Islam, which means it can never be dismantled, it can never be entered, or it can never be insulted in, in, the, in the case of spying at mosques and things of that sort. And so there's pressure not to spy at mosques. And so you have the mayor of New York stopping this kind of process, which increases the whole thing. In fact, the, even the, the uh, black uh, African-American who killed the two officers in New York, he was very much involved in Islamists. And he yeah, yeah, that was swept under the rug. I was the only one in the media who found that connection. His Facebook page showed he was an Islamist. And yet there was virtually no reporting on the fact that the two cops who were executed in their car were killed by a black Muslim. Correct. In fact, we aired videos of the conspiracy by the Islamists in New York, showing them, planning, and telling them, even have interviews with one of the Palestinians supported Hamas, you know, cursing at the police officers in the demonstrations, you know, telling them that he supports Hamas and they're going to kill them and all these things, and they're going to basically you know, make the police department dysfunctional and all this stuff. It's very clear that... It, Waleed, in these protests in Ferguson and elsewhere against the police, there's a large presence of this Islamic movement, is there not? 
Absolutely. In fact, it was orchestrated by Islamists. CARE was involved in orchestrating. Now, what Iraq. about CARE, these wonderful, good, lovely Council of American Islamic Relations? Have they condemned this attack in Paris? I haven't heard anything from them yet. But don't, don't they train our, our FBI and our Department of Homeland Security, these wonderful people who care so much about human life, CARE? Aren't they still training our uh, police agencies? and our intelligence agencies about how to be sensitive to Muslims? Yes, in fact, CARE is very much involved in removing all of the insensitive material on the training. And CARE was involved, in fact, in trying to stop me from speaking to police force about terrorism. And so they're very much involved in, you know, cleansing everything from the documentation of the FBI, you know, to remove any what they call Islamophobia. But this is, a, you know, the bigger picture isn't just care. It's the OIC, Organization of Islamic Council, which Hillary Clinton is involved in, which she spoke at the Istanbul conference. It's called the Istanbul Process. Everybody should look it up. Look up Shubat, Istanbul Process, Hillary Clinton. And you can see Hillary Clinton from 2011, 2012, just prior to even Benghazi attack, talking about twisting arms, making shame to anyone who basically makes statements that are considered Islamophobic working with Dava Tuglu, the right hand of Erdogan. It's not a shock that we see. Is there a sound of Hillary Clinton doing this? We're going to get that if there is. By the way, your website is shubat.com, S-H-O-E-B-A-T.com, correct, Waleed? Correct. Now, what is on your website about the, the threat and danger that we're facing here? I asked a friend of mine before you tell us, Jeff Rovin, who's a famous author and thinker in uh, New York City, I said, are we already dead as a society, Waleed, and everyone else? Listen to what he wrote. He said, the U.S., he said, we may be cooked, or at least that's a real risk. Ever since we became a nation of hyphenates, when we were something before America, we've lost our national way. We used to be proudly Italian-American or Irish-American. One day a year, we had a parade that went back to being America first. I don't know who or how we can get back to that American first ideal. We can start, though, by putting families back together, especially in the black communities, reinstilling a sense of pride and, more importantly, of hope. Civilization as a whole, Michael? No, not doomed. Radical Islamists have been mad at the West since El Cid beat the Moors back into Africa in the 11th century. The Islamists have not changed, and they haven't won. And they won't win, although we have to stop Iran from getting a bomb or the price of winning will be higher. But, Michael, you know as well as I, we've seen shifts in society before since the dawn of civilization. That's what's going on now. No one knows what the future will bring. Uh, so where does the future of America take us, Waleed? Where do you see, what do you see happening in one year or five years? Well, what I see happening is that Islam will be rising tremendously, and it's not just the violent Islam, it's the moderate Islam. In fact, when, every time I look at the media, you know, they talk about moderate Islam. If you look at uh, Turkey, you look at what's happening in, in, in the Middle East, moderate Islam is being painted as moderate when it's not. So it is the moderate element that comes into the play. Uh, Rashad Hussein being a spokesperson for President Obama, Hillary Clinton, you know, working with Obama to snuff out criticism of Islam, working with the OIC, Organization of... Have you heard of Zaid Jelani? Yes, uh, I think I did. Featured Muslim youth activist for Democratic Party gloats over bombing in Paris. That's today from Front Page magazine. Zaid Jelani has many credentials as an activist of the left. He was a blogger at the Center for American Progress. Think Progress site, the unofficially official spin project for Obama, Inc. He went to work for Nancy Pelosi. He went to blog for the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, also known as Blog Progressives, which is behind the draft Elizabeth Warren campaign. He currently writes for Salon. His response on Twitter to the Muslim mass murder of Mohammed cartoonist in France was to gloat about the terrorist skills of his co-religionist, saying, all right, say what you want about Muslim terrorists, but at least they get the job done. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation.